Welcome to Scale with Julia. This is where I share one important sales practice or technique every week that you can use right away to make more sales and make more money in your business. If you are new to me, I am a scaling coach and sales trainer. I have helped over 1.4 million women to scale up their businesses through books, podcasts, summits, and now a new sales training program where we're having a lot of fun helping women to close more deals and gain confidence in selling. So if that's what you're here for too, you're in the right place. You cannot take the sale out of scale. So this is a really important part of scaling up your business is mastering some of the top sales techniques that are out there. And today we're talking about future pacing. If you've never heard of it, that's fine. It comes out of some really great sales practices that help you kind of pull up and fire up the emotions of your clients. Now, why is it so important to do that? Well, you might have heard that people make decisions about what to buy with their emotions and then they justify it with logic. We've all done it. Imagine when you maybe want to buy like a nice leather jacket and you look at a bunch of different leather jackets and there's like a cheap one that's like within your budget, but you don't really love it. And then there's a more pricey one that, you know, you'd feel really confident walking into that party where you're going to see people you went to college with. And then you start thinking, oh, well, I also have the wedding in the fall. It'll be perfect for that. And all of a sudden you're buying a jacket that's twice as much as what you were going to spend but it's because you love the feeling that it gives you when you put it on. You feel confident, you feel good, maybe you feel sexy, and you wanna walk into these events having that feeling. And then you find a way to justify it by saying, well, it's gonna you know, serve this great purpose over all these different events, so it's okay to get it. We've all done it. And this is something that when you have sales training, you learn ways to help your clients have some emotions while they're on the phone with you, not in a manipulative, you know, make them cry kind of way, but just for them to connect with the positive emotions that they're going to have if they do work with you and some of the negative emotions they're going to have if they don't solve this problem right? We're just all problem solvers as entrepreneurs. So when you're on a call with a potential client, you're just trying to help them see that one, you're the right person to solve the problem. And two, they're going to have a better life if they solve it than if they don't solve it. So good things are going to happen if they don't solve it. But then three, it's going to cost them less to pay you to solve the problem than it is for them to keep it. Let's look at that for a minute. It's going to cost them less to pay you to solve the problem than it's going to cost them to keep the problem. And by the way, if that's not true, then you probably need to revise your offer because that needs to be true for all businesses, right? If I'm going to pay the electrician to come to my house and fix the wiring because, yes, it's summer in New York and a fuse blue in my apartment and now the air conditioning is not working and it turns out after having the super look at it that a wire in the wall just stopped working just decided yeah i'm done after 15 years so it's going to cost me less to have an electrician come here and fix that wiring problem than it is for me to be hot all summer and not be able to work in my own apartment right so that's an obvious one but do that math for yourself in your business and figure out is it true that it pays, it costs them less to pay you to solve it than for them to keep it. And I'm sure that is true, but it's probably good to do that math. So how do we get at the emotions which really drive the decisions that our clients make? I'm not saying they're not also looking at the numbers and being logical, you know, that's all true. But when you get sales training, it allows you to look at the things you haven't looked at yet. Because you're a business person, you're already in sales. All business is sales and all sales is business. So you obviously do know how to sell. It's just that through some of these tips and techniques I'm sharing that I learned in my sales trainings, I did four or five different sales trainings programs, you'll have some extra tools in your toolkit. And one of our graduates of 50K in 21 Days, we just wrapped up our latest challenge and we have another one launching soon this summer. She won the challenge in part by landing this additional $10,000 deal with someone she had been back and forth with for weeks, you know, Maybe they're going to work with her. Maybe they're not. They were hesitant. And finally, I said, just get them on a call and use some of these techniques that we've been teaching you. And she came back on the next week and she was so excited. She was like, it worked. And not only did it work and did this person sign for a $10,000 deal, but she said she felt so much more confident 
because she had these tools at her disposal. She had these tools at her disposal and wasn't kind of winging it on the calls, right? If you ever feel like you're winging it on sales calls, then that's usually a good sign that it's time to get some sales training because there's no reason to have that feeling. We're super proud of you. You know who you are if you're watching and uh, we're celebrating with you and congratulations on winning the challenge. So let's get into this uh, future pacing and how you can use it. So when your client gets on a call, they have a million other things going on in their lives, right? They're running their business, they're taking care of kids. If they have kids, they've got lots of problems they need to solve. But for this one precious 30 or 45 minutes that you're on a call with them or in an in-person meeting, you want them focused on this problem, the one they're going to pay you to solve. And not only that, you want them connecting to the emotions around it. So future pacing is a way to help your clients do three things. One, get in touch with their emotions around this problem. What are the great things that are going to happen if they solve it? And what are the not good things that are going to happen, the negative things that are going to happen if they don't solve it? Two, it allows them to picture the future because most people are not that good at picturing a future beyond a week or two. If I said to you right now, like, how's it going to feel in September, right? Today's June 20th when I'm recording this. It's hard to imagine how you're going to feel in September. If you're in on the East Coast, like, oh, it'll be cold by then. And if you have kids, the kids will be back in school by then. That's just a whole other scenario. So as the person doing the selling, you have to be adept at helping them to picture that future. So three advantages of future pacing, and then we're going to unpack each of them. One, get at the emotions. Two, help them see into the future, because most people are not spending a lot of time thinking about the future and what life will look like in two or three months, which may be the length of time it takes them to get the results with you. And then the last thing is it tees you up to have a tool at your fingertips called loss aversion. So it tees you up to use loss aversion. Now, if you're like, what's loss aversion? Go watch the other show I did about loss aversion. I lisp a little bit. So I'm saying loss, L-O-S-S, S is in Sam, S is in Sam, loss aversion, which is just the simple principle that people are twice as likely to take action to avoid loss as to gain pleasure. And I unpack that in a whole other scale with Julia. But when you do future pacing, you can not only get into the emotions, picture the future with them, but then thirdly, it tees you up for loss aversion because while you're picturing the future with them, you can use this other tool, which again, we're not going to unpack today because we have a whole other video on that. So let's get into the emotions of it. When you're on a call with a client and you want them to think about, okay, what will life look like maybe three months from now? Let's just take as an example someone where it's going to take them about three months to get the results. And our, our winner of the 50K in 21 Days Challenge, she has a marketing firm, and she said it would take about three months for the client to get the results by the time they got the website up and created the email funnels and did the social media. It's about how long it would take. So her instinct when we did the role play around this was to say to the client, well, won't it feel great if in three months you've got this beautiful website, you've got clients who are knocking on the door and your social media looks fantastic, you're getting lots of likes and reshares, et cetera. And so I said, okay, that's good, but it would be even better if you helped them to imagine it, if they were the ones to say it. And this is a fine tuned point, but I'd love you to get it right here in this video because it'll make all the difference on your next sales call, which is if you tell someone something especially about their emotions, they might feel it, but they might also feel a little bit defensive. Like, well, don't tell me how I'm going to feel or, oh, what are you trying to sell me? Whereas if you ask them good questions and help them to discover it, they will feel it way more deeply. So I suggested that instead of saying to them, won't that feel great when in three months you've got the website and the social media and the clients knocking on the door, if she asked them, well, what would success look like in three months? Help me understand what you would want to have happening in a perfect world. You know, you might even say like magic wand, everything goes perfectly. What would that look like? And then all of a sudden you have the client going, well, I'd love our website to just look fantastic. Like it would be amazing if my boss was like, wow, you got that up and running in just two months. And I'd also love it if we were, you know, having new likes and reshares every single day of our social media. And then I also would love it if there were 800 potential customers already in our database. And just by talking about it, those good emotions come up. Well, then you can take it one step further and you could say to the client, 
wow, that sounds great, or make a little comment, ask another question, and then say, how does that feel to talk about it? That simple question, how does that feel to talk about it, can unleash a lot of positive emotions. I know that when I've asked that of women on calls who are curious about our 12-week accelerator program, and we do this future pacing, right, where I kind of virtually take them by the hand into the future and, and look at what things might look like for them, they often paint a picture of a company where they have a team and they're doing more of, the, more of the part that they love and not wearing so many hats. They sometimes have more time with their kids, more able to take a vacation. And after they describe all this and making more money, of course, that's the whole point of our accelerator program, then I'll often say, how does it feel to talk about that? And often there's just like a huge exhale, like, Wow, yes, that is what I wanted when I first started this business. That's the whole reason I started this business was to have that kind of freedom and that kind of abundance, but they haven't really had it. And that's why they're on the call with me. But reconnecting with that emotion of how good that would feel to actually have that business that they started in the first place is very powerful and gets them excited about making this big change that they would make if they come to work with us. So I don't know what the big change is that you're looking for your clients to make. It might be in marketing, like our graduate. Maybe you're a coach. Maybe you're selling products. Maybe by buying your products, they're going to have a huge transformation in their life. Well, helping them to imagine that is going to make all the difference in getting them to yes. So that's the first part is bring out those emotions by talking about what life will look like, having them describe it instead of you describing it to them and then saying, well, how would that feel? Now, the second piece is to really walk them into that future from a logistical standpoint. Like, what would their day-to-day -day be like? What would they be doing every day? The more that they can see it and feel it and taste it, the more real it will be to them. So that's kind of the art and the science of future pacing. Anyone can say to a client, um, well, hey, what will life look like in three months if everything works out? And that's a good start if you just do that. But the art of this is being able to kind of tease out, well, how will it feel? How will it smell? How will it taste, right? Like what is something they would actually be doing different in three months if this all goes well? Sometimes I have women tell me, well, I've always wanted to take my mom to Paris. I said, well, oh my God, describe that to me. She's like, well, I picture like flying first class and I picture me and my mom sitting in first class and we're drinking champagne. And they're bringing around those little pastries and, you know, she'll just describe the whole scene to me. And one, it's very thrilling for me to hear all that and to hear her excitement. Two, she gets all that emotion of like, yes, this is what I want. And again, people make decisions with their emotions and justify it with logic. So this is her version of putting on the leather jacket and imagining walk, walking into the class reunion or the wedding, feeling super confident, feeling super sexy. And then all of a sudden we're looking for ways to justify the purchase. So I'd love you to play around with this. If it's something that you need help with, just reach out to us. We have classes starting every few months of our 50K and 21 days challenge. And we do a lot of role play there to help our women really master future pacing, loss aversion, all these tools. So the third thing is to really figure out once you're in the future with them, how can you make sure that they see that it's going to cost them more to keep the problem than to pay you to solve it? And so I'm not going to do a whole lesson on loss aversion, but I'll just give a quick reminder that while you're asking questions about the future, once you map out this fantastic future that they could have if they work with you and you help them solve their problem, then you can also spend a few minutes on, well, what's going to happen if you don't, right? So take them to the place where they see this beautiful vision of what's possible, but then also say, well, what if you don't? And again, this is where it's very important not to start telling them like, oh, well, here are all the bad things that are going to happen if you don't do this, right? That will feel very salesy and pushy and not, you know, in integrity. Way better if you say, well, help me understand, Bob, um, let's say you don't build the website or do the social media or get any of these email funnels going that we talked about in three months when this new product line is launched, what's like the worst thing that could happen, right? You could ask it that way. And then all of a sudden Bob has to think about, oh, well, I guess we'd be launching with no customers lined up at all to sell to. Um, my boss had said having the website up and running was a super high priority. So at that board meeting, that's not going to go well for me. 
And, you know, I guess I'll feel like I kind of was asleep at the wheel because, you know, we were tasked with getting this up and running. And so you want to connect them to that because that all has emotions around it. And you could even say there, how does that feel? And then they might say, well, that feels terrible. <laughs> so, um, or that feels like I failed or that feels like it'd be really disappointing. Any emotions you can get out there are very valuable because people are twice as likely to take action to avoid loss, loss aversion, as to gain pleasure. So once you have the client thinking about, wow, that's not going to feel good at all. That's not what I want. Then you're ready to move into the closing part, which is a whole other teaching we're not going to get into here. But just mastering this one principle, technique, whatever you want to call it, of future pacing can make a huge difference on your next sales call or meeting. So try it out. If you get stuck, you can come back here and ask a question. Sometimes we do have live questions during these. So if you want to ask a live question here, feel free. I always try to answer them. I do get to all the questions. And we have started reposting these on YouTube. So you can see all the Scale with Julia's here on LinkedIn, or you can head over to YouTube and get a whole little mini training in some of the best sales techniques. And if you're looking to really fine tune your sales and get on every single sales call or meeting with total confidence and knowing you can get to yes, if a yes is possible, a yes is not always possible, but if a yes is possible, then you can check out our sales training program. And we have all of our programs at millionwomen.com. Just click on the programs and then 50K in 21 days. And feel free to set up a call with us to talk about sales or scaling or individual coaching at scalejulia.co. So I hope you'll be trying out this new tool of future pacing. And I will see you right back here next week for Scale with Julia. Have a great day and stay brave and go big.